Welcome to a video I meant to do at the end of 2023, and that is my favorite things of the year. We're in February already, but I'm just gonna go for it because I love these types of videos. I always pick up something personally. None of the items or companies I'm going to mention have sponsored this video. That said, this video is supported by those of you who have purchased my camera gear, LUTs, and guides. Check the links in the description to learn more, and thank you guys so much for the support. Let's kick things right off with a camera. My favorite camera of the year is going to be the FX3. 30. This little sucker for around $1,700 is insane. I can't believe this camera exists and it's a complete slam dunk for anyone looking to film videos primarily who are looking for a really solid body with a ton of video features. So love that camera. And along with it is a lens that I used a ton and that is going to be the Sigma 18 to 50. First of all, the price on this is incredible at under $500, I believe, or around $500. It is tiny, smaller than a soda pop can, and it has an insane close focus on this thing. Here's some footage from a video I did on lenses for the Sony FX30. And as you can see, you can get objects right up against this lens. So it's kind of doubles as a macro, which is crazy. Optically, it's not perfect, but it's a pretty darn great lens for the money and a great kind of 24 to 70 equivalent on crop Sony sensors. I'm gonna kind of mix and match these things and include some non-video gear. This is actually a fantastic tool that I think everyone should have. And it's essentially a thread guide. So I'll have some better footage for you guys, but in short, it has a ton of different threads in both Imperial and metric, and it allows you to find weird threads for random stuff. Now, why would you want this? Well, if you're like me, you've got a lot of carts, a lot of desks, and a lot of these have those annoying plastic screw on feet. With one of these things, you can take those feet off find whatever the thread size is and go out and buy big, beautiful, delightful, breaking casters and make anything mobile and portable. So this is just an amazing tool. Whenever you're trying to find a weird thread, you really can't go wrong. And it's 10 bucks, which is pretty nice. Now it is plastic, so you don't want to crank down on it, but I have had no issues and I've had this thing for years, but I've been using it more and more and I just love it. Easily, my favorite audio tool of the year is going to be the Rode Wireless Pro. This thing is a complete slam dunk. The ability to have time code linked with multiple devices, 32-bit uh, float audio, blah, blah, blah. It's just ridiculously good. You can check out my full review for my thoughts on it and how it works, but I've got two of these kits and I've been using them a ton. And honestly, it's hard to use really anything else for audio these days. In the rigging department, my favorite handle this year has to go to the Nitsi uh, Stingray handle. Um, I still haven't found my perfect top handle, and I think in 2024, I might try my hand at making my own top handle, but this one is pretty darn close. I like how long it is. Uh, it has a ton of different mounting points. Uh, it comes in a couple different flavors when it comes to how it interfaces with your camera. I love the NATO version of this and it's just a great handle. So if you're looking for a top handle, this one is pretty darn close to perfect. Something I haven't reviewed yet, but I plan on doing a video on is going to be these guys, the Tilta Nucleus Nano 2s. These things are super rad, and I'm really looking forward to talking about these here this year. So stay tuned for that. But if you're looking for a wireless follow focus system, this is going to be a complete no-brainer. I gotta say I'm a little biased on the next one because I invented it, and that is the Cineback for the FX3 and FX30. It's a device that goes on the back of your camera and it turns it into a full cinema body instead of just a small mirrorless camera. We have a lot more of these units coming and we have a new top handle unit for the XLR top handle. So it actually interfaces into the Cineback main body. It's fully aluminum, so it's my first CNC project and uh, really looking forward to getting these out here at the end of the month. We have batches every month for these. I've done a video on it. You can check all that stuff out in the description. Also on this rig, I have two of my other favorite things from this year. One of them is going to be the small rig uh, 99 Pro batteries. So this is a V-mount mini battery and they've done an amazing job with these. So I've done a video on the older 99 watt hour batteries, but these ones are a significant upgrade when it comes to ergonomics the way they operate, uh, just a great all around battery. So if you're looking to freshen up your V-mounts, check these guys out in the description. The other thing on this rig that I'm absolutely loving is the Nisi Athena Prime. So I've done a review on these pretty much 
They're end game lenses in my opinion, and they are not going to destroy your budget. They're all the same size. They're small as you can see here, and they open up to T1.9. So I love these things. Optically, they are 10 chef kisses, and they're definitely going to outperform a lot of the lenses that are available on the budget end these days. So that's a great lens set. And my next favorite thing, similar to the lenses, is going to be a filter, and that is the Smoke 2 filter by Tiffin. I've done a whole video on it. I love that thing. It's just an amazing tool to instantly add a hazy look to your footage without having to rent a hazer or try to manage haze throughout the day. The next is a specific tool that I use a ton and that's calipers and I got myself an extra long set so that I can measure large things. So calipers are amazing. Not everyone needs them but Man, these are great tools to have around whenever you need to measure things very accurately. Next is the most expensive thing I bought in 2023 and one of the most expensive things I've purchased ever. And that is that I finally broke down and purchased an LTO tape drive. Now, there's a great video by Linus Tech Tips talking about what LTO is and how it works, but long and short of it is that LTO tape is a way to archive your footage in our case, and it actually uses tapes, which sounds insane here in 2024 but what's wild about these is while the drives themselves are insanely expensive the tapes per terabyte are ridiculously affordable and economical so the drive that i purchased cost me 5500 bucks yes almost six thousand dollars after taxes but the drives themselves are sixty dollars for 12 terabytes and what's crazy with these is they're rated to last a really really long time unlike hard drives so what i've been doing is when projects are old or older footage from previous years i write those to two different lto tapes or more put them in two different locations and now i know i'm good to go for that archive footage if i ever need to pull stuff out of those i can grab one of those tapes and pull that in now it's not um, going to be like pulling footage off of a hard drive because it's tape, so it's linear. But if you have a bunch of footage sitting on your RAID system or your server and it's taking up a lot of room, LTO tape is a fantastic way to archive footage and archive older projects. So I'm really excited to have that. And now I'm not worrying about data anymore and running out of space on our server. So while it was incredibly painful to pull the trigger on that from a financial standpoint, I'm so glad that I did, and I'm really excited to use that workflow going forward. Next, we have a computer and two pieces of software that I use quite a bit this year. So the computer is going to be my new uh, Mac, St Mac Studio M2 Ultra. And I mean, what is there to say? The IO is amazing. This thing screams through edits and exports incredibly happy with that. When it comes to software, I've been using two kind of keyboard and workflow related softwares. The first is Keyboard Maestro. Essentially, you can create custom keyboard shortcuts with really complex workflows and automations. So think command whatever you want on your keyboard and a huge multi-step workflow ensues on your computer. Super easy to program all of this stuff. So if you're a video editor, if you're really doing anything with computers and workflows, great piece of software, absolutely amazing. The next is Carabiner Elements. Essentially, it allows you to take any keyboard or mouse and change buttons and just make everything uniform and do a lot of really cool stuff. So you can set up a single function button to execute a giant list of commands. Uh, it's similar to Keyboard Maestro, but a little more uh, modifying of your keyboard and your peripherals. So if you do, again, a lot of things with computers, it's a really great tool. Last but not least, I have a book recommendation for you guys. I love economics. Uh, it's one of the only classes I actually finished in my one semester of college before I quit college. And I decided recently I wanted to get back into it. So I just hopped on Audible, searched for economics, and found Basic Economics by Thomas Sowell. And this book is amazing. Just a great read, very, very well done. And if you're interested in economics and how kind of the world works in that department, something I would recommend and something I learned a lot from. Let me know in the comments what you really got a kick out of in the last year. And if there's anything you recommend, I check out going forward. So I know this is a weird video to have in the middle of February, but thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you guys in the next video.